For centuries, the people of Bihar have been victims of the ravaging river Kosi. Born in the Himalayas, among majestic peaks, the Kosi rushes to the plains of Nepal and Bihar. Once on the plains, the river, like a writhing snake, changes its course almost at will. During the last 200 years, the fickle Kosi has shifted some 112 kilometers westward, bringing devastation to the fertile land. On the way down, the river picks up large quantities of silt. This coarse silt comes to rest once the movement of the river slows down in the plains. Gradually, the level of the riverbed rises, and soon, the Kosi climbs its banks and becomes a runaway. Its spreading waters wipe all traces of human endeavor from the countryside. Eating into the very body of the land, the water enters villages and homes. Its fury knows no mercy. Each year, the floods bring misery to the people and to the nation, losses that run into hundreds of millions of rupees. Communications are disrupted, crops are washed away. The land, coated with coarse silt, is rendered dry and arid for generations. Soon after independence, the government of India decided to tame the river. In 1953, after six years of investigation by the Central Water and Power Commission, a scheme was approved. The Indo-Nepalese Coordination Committee was formed. The actual supervision of the Kosi project was to be done by the Kosi Control Board, made up of representatives of the state and central governments. The Kosi River Valley project consists of four stages. The first is the construction of earthen embankments to hold the river on one course. The second is a protective measure and involves the construction of a barrage on the Indo-Nepal border near Bhimnagar. The third step is the digging of canals in Nepal and North Bihar on both sides of the river Kosi. After this, a hydroelectric power station with a generating capacity of 12,000 kilowatts will be set up. On the 14th of January, 1955, work started at the site. Volunteers formed the bulk of the labor force. Some of them were members of state assemblies and members of parliament. Others came from the Bharat Sevak Samaj and cooperative societies. The National Cadet Corps and the Auxiliary Cadet Corps lent their help too. It was the first time so many social workers helped in a project like this. About 243 kilometers of embankments were completed, thus confining the Kosi to a breadth varying from about 4.8 to 16 kilometers. Ring buns were built around the towns of Mahadevnath and Nirmali to re-protect them from floods. Eventually, 300 villages will be submerged. About 1,015,000 people have to be resettled at a cost of about 21 million rupees. But the cost and the effort are negligible in comparison to the benefits of this river valley project. Beginning high up in the mountains, at about 5,490 meters, the Kosi is fed by melting glaciers and heavy rainfall, draining an area of about 62,160 square kilometers. The Kosi is joined at Triveni by its two tributaries, Arun and Tamu. This swollen river, now called the Saptakosi, passes the sacred shrine of Barakshetra in Nepal and enters the plains majestically at Chatra. From there, it moves about 241 kilometers across North Bihar till it meets the Ganga in Purnia district. The Kosi, by flowing through Nepal and Bihar, links them and is the basis of the second stage of the Kosi project. Surveys were conducted and readings taken at the proposed site of the barrage. 
On the 30th of April, 1959, the second stage began. His Majesty, the King of Nepal, laid the foundation for the barrage. Prime Minister Nehru was also present. The ceremony was another link in the chain of friendship between India and Nepal. For the thousands of people inhabiting the area, the occasion marked the beginning of better times. It meant not only the cementing of an old friendship between two countries, but also a closer contact between neighboring peoples. From the initial blasting of rock, right through the numerous phases of the project, they are now working together for a common end. Thus, it has been not merely an opportunity for men to learn about machines, but men to learn about men. During the peak season of the construction, about 1,020,000 workers were employed at the barrage site. They came not only from Bihar, but from the corners of India and Nepal as well. Also aiding in this gigantic scheme were machines that drawed tirelessly on, working day and night. Huge machines capable of handling the work of many men put together added speed to the project. Large quantities of earth had to be transported and dumped. Some of those who had never been out of this hilly region learnt more than they had known before. And along with their knowledge, their standards of living rose too. For the construction of the barrage meant many new jobs. Steadily and with care, the plans were put into practice. Slowly but surely, progress has been made. A solid structure of reinforced concrete has arisen. A structure strong enough to withstand the ferocity of the river coast. On this barrage will rest the protection and safety of millions of people. When completed in 1963, it will be capable of diverting water for irrigating more than 11,040,450 hectares of land. The cost of the entire Kosi scheme is estimated to be over 500 million rupees. The construction of the barrage has brought with it a number of accompanying benefits. A colony has been built at Birpur to house Nepali and Indian workers. It is a modern township with facilities that include a regular water supply. This supply of drinking water in a place known to suffer from intermittent drought is derived from newly dug tube wells. Hospitals too have been established. These are equipped and staffed by experienced doctors and nurses. There are schools, libraries and recreation centers for the residents of the area. There are playgrounds too, which provide space for healthy exercise for children as well as grown-ups. The third step, which consists of digging canals, is now well underway. In Bihar, these canals, including Chatra, will irrigate about 11,040,445 hectares of land in the northern districts of Bihar. The crop yield here will total to a value of 23.5 million rupees. Of all these benefits, the people of Nepal and India are well aware. They know too that with the setting up of the hydroelectric power station, the change will be radical. A wild, capricious river will have been tamed. Soon, the days when floods cake their fields with silt will be a memory in the past. The present gives but an inkling of a brighter future. The harvest will increase, the land will grow more fertile, and the river will be a herald of plenty. These bounties are but a fraction of the benefits they will reap when the entire Kosi River Valley project is complete. For the people of this region, the harnessing of the Kosi River will mean the end of a long and tragic drama. <laughs>